Gamers, today we are doing everything you need to know about Alt Omens. Probably the next video I'll be doing is everything you need to know about Malians, and then I'll start recording Season 3 guides, and eventually I'm gonna catch up with everything you need to know about the civs that I haven't done yet, because I feel like that's not prior. I wanna do the new civs first, and then also the new builder guides. So, let's get started. Um, I've done already a couple of these for like English, French, Rus, Mongol, and basically what I'll be doing is going through the Civ bonuses, give you guys like kind of like tips and tricks regarding uh, this is how you should be building stuff in this order, uh, not necessarily a build order guide, and also explain the Civ fully, explain all the units, especially because Ottomans and Malians have a lot of unique units, so uh, there's plenty to go around. So, uh, Ottomans difficulty two out of three. Mm, two out of three difficulty? Mm, I mean, probably correct. I would say, probably correct. I don't think they're as hard as China, but they're definitely harder than English and French. Uh, but I would probably put them as one of the kind of like basic sieves. You don't gotta do anything fancy with Ottomans. It's just basically, uh, it's kind of like Delhi with free units instead of free upgrades. And you are supposed to overwhelm your opponent in feudal or castle. So if that's a play style that sounds good to you, um, there you go. So, civilization bonuses. Uh, training units advancing the ages grants experience towards Vizier points. The higher cost of the action, the more experience is earned. Gain up to five Vizier points and spend them to unlock powerful, unique Ottoman bonuses. So, the first thing that they have is very unique to them is they have these Vizier points, like the thing says, every time you uh, uh, build a building, every time you build a unit, the higher the cost of that, whatever your building is, the more XP you get, and then there's like three tiers, which I'll show you guys in the game of Vizier points, and they're nine, uh, up to nine total. And there's also a landmark that can unlock seven. So usually you can only unlock five, but with one of the landmarks, you can lock up to seven. And they're also pretty good. Every and each one of them has kind of like a place, I guess, in the game. It just depends what you're going for. So some of them are more reactionary, and some of them are more like build order focused. Military schools, this is also a unique building that Ottomans have. Uh, military schools can produce units continuously at no cost. So for example, I don't know the exact number, but if a spearman takes 20 seconds to make, uh, military school produces spearmen in 80 seconds, but it's free. And it's once you start making a spearman, it's auto queue, so you don't need to remake spearmen uh, after spearman comes out or any other unit. It will automatically start a new one. You can produce every single unit in the game that Ottomans have from military schools, um, infantry and cavalry. Obviously you cannot produce knights in dark age or feudal age, you have to be castle age for that. Um, and the way that military schools work is you can make one per age and one of the vizier points will uh, help you unlock another military school, so for a total of four. And these are very, very good because you just get insane value uh, over the course of the game. And in the late game, if I'm not wrong, you get like thousand plus resources per minute from these four military schools, which is quite insane, quite insane for free, especially because you can make gold units out of it. Influence from blacksmiths and universities provide increased military production speeds after each age up. Uh, this is something that I'll show you guys in the game. But like it says, uh, blacksmith and universities will give you uh, basically like an influence uh, a zone or area like Abbasid and Delhi have. And if you put your production buildings inside, uh, they increase the building speed of military schools or barracks or archer ranges or siege workshops or stables. So very nice. Uh, Janissary hand cannoneer unit is available in Castle Age. So they're the first civ that have hand cannoneers in Castle Age. And they're also able to repair siege, but they don't work like normal hand cannoneers. They do bonus damage against cavalry. So they're supposed to counter uh, cavalry and they do a really good job of that. Mechter is another unique unit uh, that has three different auras. I'm gonna show you guys that in the game for a potential up to four, which you'll see what I mean. They have the great bombard siege engine. I just noticed like, Ottoman Civ bonuses are actually just explaining unique units. I just realized that. Field uh, the Great Bombard Siege Engine with longer range and area damage. So they don't have a Bombard, they have a Great Bombard, which is a thousand and a half resources per. 
and it deals splash damage, but cold rinse counter it pretty, pretty hard. But if there's no cold rinse, pretty good. Produce the Grand Galley ship that can convert into floating military school. So in Castle Age, you can make a Grand Galley that can act as a military school, and it will basically produce units inside the ship as you know you're micring and fighting with that ship. Movement speed of trade ships and transport ships in or trade ships and transport ships increased, and it cannot harvest boar, uh, just like Malians, just like Delhi, just like up acid. So, with all that being said, let me host up a little Boulder Bay over here, and uh, let's get into the game. Let me just get some resources in there. All right, looks good. So now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna throw, go through every single building, every single upgrade, show you guys all the unique techs that they have, all the unique units, and kind of explain a little bit in depth from then on out. The first thing we're gonna do, their house is completely normal, nothing weird about that. And as you can see, they can make, in Feudal Age right here, they can make a military school it costs 150 wood and 100 stone, and with Ottomans you actually start with 50 stone. So in order to produce military school in, in Dark Age, you need to send 5 villagers and start to stone, then do one trip back, you don't need to build a mining camp, and then you can build a military school, and it will allow you to produce units for free. You can also make a barracks, which I'm gonna do as well. And there's already a lot of builds where you open with a military school in Dark Age and kind of harass the enemy villagers in stone or gold and just kind of go uh, from then on out. Other than that, all their eco upgrades are normal. They don't have any unique upgrades or any villager tricks, increased income or whatever else. So if you look, my military school finished and it will always start with a spearman. So no matter what age you are, it will always start with a spearman. So if you want to switch it to something else, you have to click that. Like, I can't not make archers, obviously. But if I was in Feudal, I'd click Archers, and then you can cancel the queue, and it would start the Archer from then on out. Mill, all the same upgrades. Mining camp, normal, nothing special. I'm gonna build a couple of docks here, actually. First, landmarks. Let's talk about those. Age to landmarks is Twin Minaret, 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 Madras and Sultani, uh, Sultanhani trade network. So these two are both economic landmarks. Uh, this one right now is more popular at pro level play. This one is pretty good, but there's kind of like a downside to it. So what you can do, uh, it acts as a market and it comes with two traders garrison inside and it generates 28 gold per minute for each one. So you can put six traders inside. Now initially, a lot of people were playing with this landmark, but now it's it's switched over to this one. And the reason for that, uh, initially people thought you can make this landmark and then instantly get the traders out and do like a trip or two. And once the enemy's out on the map, you go back into uh, your landmark and they still get passive gold. The issue is the traders cost 60 wood, 60 gold, which is quite expensive for, for early on gameplay. And another issue is that they take up supply. So they're not, you know, they do take up supply and, and you need to invest a lot of resources for this landmark to get to its full potential. And this is why, like I said, this landmark has been a lot more popular and I'll explain why in a second. This landmark is also acts like a mill. So you can put this landmark like close to the berries and then collect uh, berries from it later on or you can put it on deer or whatever else now let's place this landmark right here so what this landmark does is it will spawn four berry bushes which can be harvested 50 percent faster and berry bushes are regrown after 120 seconds if depleted so let me build a bunch of houses here so why is this a good landmark well, if you play uh, on, uh, obviously I wouldn't do this landmark on water maps because the trade one is better because um, you will get passive gold income. But if you're playing on land maps, the reason why this landmark is really, really good is because you will be node very noticeably uh, able to 
stay without going to farms for way longer than your opponents because these berries respawn after 120 seconds and they have a uh, like i said 50 percent gather rate so what you want to do without any upgrades you can see berries popping up they have 175 food uh and two more are gonna spawn here and here so the reason why this landmark is really nice is because there's a faster gathering rate on it you get a really nice value for the amount of villagers you're putting in and this respawns whole game this respawns whole game so you get really good value it's it's kind of like if you started with a couple of farms in feudal right look at it that way it's just free food and it's just really really nice and when you play optimums and you go for this landmark you will notice that your food lasts way longer uh, then when you play with the other sieves and that's because you have nice food income from this uh, One thing to note is if you build this landmark close to berries and you get these berries right here and then these So if the landmark was like here What will happen is the villagers will go onto these normal berries So that's something you need to be careful of and I personally would probably advise against putting this close to berries You can put it on deer but not close to these berries because workers will constantly be switching to the crap berries and thus you kind of lose value of the landmark. The way you want to use this landmark is you could just put four villagers on either this or this side and you put them on the same one because it only starts respawning once it's depleted. So you don't want to put one villager per berry, you want to put four on one. And once they finish, the villagers will automatically go to this one, and then this one, and then this one. By the time you're on this one, the first berry will respawn, so it gives you like a nice cycle of income. One thing to note, if you get horticulture, or higher than that upgrades, um, you will only need three villagers on these berries. If you have four, once you get the horticulture upgrade, what will happen is the berries will run out too quickly and your villagers will go idle. So, yeah, use four and then three once you get the um, once you get the upgrade. Um, I feel like that was the that was the best way to to go about it. Especially if you get wheelbarrow, the runtime. See, they deplete really quickly, uh, but they give you quite a nice uh, income. And it's not just about income of the food, which you can see it's about two hundred, maybe even higher. Uh, it's the fact that, like I said, your food will last longer, and that's why Ottoman is a really good feudal, or um, like if you want to fight in feudal, or a sieve that can go really fast uh, castle. So, let's get a couple of these, and now that we're feudal, we get access to another military school, because like I said, you get one per age. So, what I'm going to be doing right now is build another military school and show you guys what Ottomans get in feudal. So for water, uh, Ottomans actually don't uh, get anything. They have everything like the other sieves, fishing boat, trade ships, uh, transport ships that are apparently are faster, which I didn't even know. And then they have uh, Doe, Hulk and Demolition Ship, which is just Arrow, Springled and Demo Ship. Their unique upgrade is only available in Imperial Age. So yeah. So if you look now, I have Spearmen queued up. So if I want to change this one to Nectar Training, and I want to change this one to Archer, I would need to cancel the queue, and then they're going to reset, and one will start producing Archers, and one will start producing Nectar. Now, if, let's say I only want to produce one of these, I can already click on the Archers. So what will happen is once Nectar is out, the Archers will automatically begin after that after they're completed so um you can see here what the the buildings are set on so that's something to consider and you know to know if you are um going for military schools now the blacksmith as you can see it has influence range so if i put a blacksmith right here you can see all three buildings with these little pluses are in range and what blacksmith does you can see here more detailed version of what you saw earlier in the lobby Military unit production rate is increased by 25% in feudal, 33% in castle, and 40% uh, in imperial. And in Istanbul Observatory increases his bonus to 60%. Uh, Istanbul Observatory is an imperial age landmark. That sound that you just heard is right on time. And as you can see, there's no unique upgrades uh, for Ottoman in here, all standard. 
And as you can see, they're missing an upgrade here. And this upgrade is the one that allows you to produce your units faster out of all your production buildings. They don't need it because they get it automatically basically and it kind of scales up with age. So the sound that you just heard is the Vizier points. So this is the experience bar that you see here. So you will see now when this unit comes out, it's gonna come out in eight seconds. You will see the experience will go up a little bit. So I'm gonna wait just so you guys can see. I drank all my coffee, Saj. You can see it. Oh, there you go. So, what else? Um, let's make stables. And there we go. There we go. Alright, so Vizier point. So once you click here, you will open this like little talent list, Imperial Council. And basically, in order to access tier 2 or tier 3, you need to unlock at least one... Uh, you need to put at least one Vizier point into the previous tier. So if I take one of these two, one of these three, then the next Vizier point can be spent here. If I take one of these, then the next Vizier point can be spent in the last one. So, let's quickly uh, go through these and kind of give you when you should go for which Vizier point and why they're good or why they're bad, in my opinion. So, the first one is, I feel like, very situational. Uh, so, it spawns two Imams, which are, you know, Monk Scholars. And the Landmark Town Center. Imams heal... Um, nearby units for one health every second. So, uh, Imams from Ottomans only gain this AoE healing for one health every second if you take this, if you put Vizier Point in here. If you do not take this, your Imams produced at the Mosque will not have this. But once you get this, then your Imams will have this kind of little aura of healing. So obviously, uh, this is not picked too often, but obviously you can use it for any kind of like early aggression or early, early pressure or if you're getting attacked and a bunch of your units are low health, you can take this in a heat of a moment. But the other two uh, right now are considered a lot better. Second best one is Anatolian Hills. Uh, not necessarily second best one, I guess it depends how you're playing the game. So if you go for like 2TC or 1TC play into Castle, uh, you would want to get this because it will spawn eight sheep at your landmark. So it will give you another 2000 food for free. Uh, and with this landmark, that's going to allow you to stay under your TC for a very long time. And it's going to increase your villager mining speed by 10%. So this is for all the villagers for the whole game. You get 10% mining speed on gold and stone. Um, and this is something that you do want to get at a point because 10% mining speed is obviously really, really good. Um, and this used to be the meta. Now, recently I've been at the Red Bull Wallola tournament and Ottomans went from kind of like a normal sieve or normal gameplay, like 2TC into castle and stuff like that. Uh, it's kind of turned into one base sieve that I'll be making a guide about so you guys can destroy everyone on the ladder. And I feel like 1 million percent, once I make a guide for this build order, the Ottoman win rate will skyrocket because uh, the build is disturbingly easy to use and it's disturbingly hard to hold. So stay tuned in. Um, so the, the last one is Mechter Drums. So what it does is it spawns Mechter, which is this bad boy right here. Probably the most broken unit in the game right now. And uh, I already told devs that they really need to nerf it. And a lot of pro players, are, or not a lot, every pro player agrees with this. It's absolutely insane. And I'll go through it in a second what it does. So if you take this one, it spawns one Mechter for free at your landmark town center. Usually, by the way, these cost 100 food and 80 gold for one. And what it gives is an aura to every Mechter that increases their movement speed to units in the same formation by 15%. So why is this good? Well, 15% movement speed is insane on your units. And it's also insane if you're all in, all in, in feudal. Uh, it gives you the other Mechter auras that it has, plus this one. So this isn't like an option. This is always on. 
and it gives you the other ones as well. So I'm gonna take this one just to show you guys. Here it is. So if we look right here, this mech there now has movement speed bonus 15% and units have it as well. And they are fast as fuck, boy. It's very hard to run away from Ottomans and it makes them a very, very strong aggressive sieve, whether it's in feudal or castle. Now, what other things Mechter has? Well, it has no auto auto attack, so it has no weapons. So you need to keep this unit very, very safe and the opponents will try to snipe it very, very often because of it. It has three auras or three drums. The first drum is Mechter drums that increase attack speed by nearby units by 15%. This is very, very strong if you're running a high DPS army like crossbows or hand cannoneers or archers, or it even works on siege, by the way. Uh, so that's something that is most commonly used. These two are more situational. Uh, defense drums, drums that increase the melee armor of nearby units by plus two. Uh, if you're ever getting like Mongol Tower Rushed or Atrium Man at Arm Rush, this is something that you can use because plus two armor is quite a lot in Feudal uh, or Castle, so that's something you can use. And then the last one is ranged defense drums, extra drums that increase the uh, ranged armor of nearby units by plus one. So if you're doing any kind of run by under TC uh, with your Sipahis, which are their horsemen, uh, you're not gonna need attack speed, but you would rather have that plus one armor to make them a little bit tankier. And you can switch between these. So if I click on this one, uh, the units now have plus one ranged armor and this attack drum now has a cooldown of 15 seconds so you can just switch back and forth constantly. Now, Mechter, broken. Uh, to put in perspective, Delhi Tower of Keg W, aka Tower of Memes, aka Tower of Victory, gives 20% attack speed to only infantry, okay? It gives 20% attack speed to only infantry. And this is a landmark, right? This is just a unit you can make. And this gives 15% attack speed to all your units, okay? Let's just stop right there. This gives 15% attack speed to infantry, ranger, melee, cavalry, and siege. So I would expect a nerf for Mechters Hopefully soon, because it is absolutely insane right now. It is 100% the most imbalanced unit in the game. The only reason why people are not complaining about it more is because these kinds of imbalances are harder to notice because it doesn't attack, right? If this unit was like one-shotting 20 units, everyone would be like, oh, that's OP as hell, nerf it. But this is an aura that is hard to calculate or visually see. So a lot of people don't consider it a problem. I personally think it's insanely good and it will probably get nerfed uh, eventually. But you gotta keep these bad boys safe because they are expensive and you don't wanna be losing them, all right? So with that being said, let's explain the uh, last, or not the last, the next unique unit that uh, Ottomans have, which are Sipahis. These are their horsemen. So if you look at the stables, they can produce Sipahis, Knights, Scouts, and Mechters. So, Sipahis are basically, like I said, they're horsemen, except they're unique. Did they play different music? No, it's the same. Okay, I'm gonna move it away. So, the reason why Sipahis are... Oh my god, why are they so loud? The reason why they uh, are unique is they have this unique ability right here called Fortitude. And what Fortitude does is it gives you 50% attack speed. OP, right? But you'll receive 50% more damage from melee weapons. To put in perspective how good and bad this can be, uh, if you're playing against only ranged units, you can activate this like Baboon and just completely mow them down. They're like... They go like insane frenzy mode and will just like completely demolish any siege or range units. But if you think this might be a really good thing to use against villagers when you raid, 
if you take like five Sipahi and you raid 15 villagers, the villagers will auto attack and almost one shot your Sipahis. That's how much more damage they're taking. So you need to be very careful using this ability. And if you're playing against Ottoman, if you see Sipahis use this ability, just clap them with villagers once or twice and they will take a crap load of damage. This ability cannot be turned off. So once you use it, 50% attack speed is remaining and you can see that little glow that the units have, which means they have the ability on. So you definitely do not want to use this next to Spearman. The Spearman almost like, it doesn't two shot, but it will take like 60% of your health with an auto attack if you have this on. So be very careful how you use this ability uh, because it can be really good or really bad. You can throw the game. Uh, like I said, you cannot turn it off. So once you turn it on, good luck. Now, um, let's go on to the next thing. Let's go back to, um, I'll make a market. I'll make a, I mean, TC gives nothing. And yeah, I'll just make a market. Market, nothing really new, nothing really, you know, interesting. It's just a market. Uh, traders cost 66 in the new patch. So yeah. Now. Let's talk about the rest of the Vizier points. I'm about to get another Vizier point at the moment another unit comes up. So, so now I'll pick this. So if I wanted, I could take this. I could take Anatolian Hills. So you don't have to take the next tier. I could take this right now if I wanted to. But usually the most commonly picked uh, Vizier point to, to take next or to put next is military campus. And what military campus does, it increases military schools that can be built by plus one. So this, by the way, these three tiers have nothing to do with age. I just want to mention that. This is not like feudal castle imperial. You can take the third one in, in feudal. If you have a long enough game and you're massing units, you can take these in feudal. So um, this one is the most commonly used. It increases the amount of military schools you can build by plus one. So in feudal you can make three. Um, in Oh, sorry, you can make five imperial schools total, not four. I said earlier four. You can build five total. So you can have three in feudal and then you can have four in castle and five uh, in imperial. So obviously this is very good and it's going to provide you with a lot of value. Uh, Chad is blocking the tooltip. Okay, let me remove it so you guys can see it nicely. Goodbye Twitch chat. There we go. Thank you for letting me know. The second one, this is the one that's used in the late game. So this is not something you take now. This is something you take like as last potentially. Uh, it's Siege uh, Cruise and what it does is allows all Siege engines to be garrisoned by infantry. While garrison attack speed and setup speed increase by 25%. So once you take this, uh, you can put a spearman, a villager, uh, an archer, a crossbow, man at arm, whatever infantry you want into any siege unit. So you can put it in uh, Springald, Mangonel, Great Bombard, Trebuchet, and it will increase their attack speed and setup speed by 25%, which is obviously very, very nice for the late game because if you have Springalds, you have 25% attack speed. It's good. Um, and then the last one, this is like a team game kind of thing where it increases the amount of gold traders collect by 40%. Now this one is kind of, it sounds like broken, but it's actually pretty useless because if you play AoE 4, you know that if you have trades set up and you have 30 traders, you have crap down of gold. Do you really need 40% extra, right? It's very hard to spend gold when you're trading. So it's like you don't need extra 40%. You're already set up. So this is probably one of the more underwhelming uh, of the zero points to or to spend it on in the Imperial Council, in my opinion. Because like I said, if you're trading, you don't need the extra 40%. So, yeah. But I, I see some people taking it in team games and stuff like that. The last row, let's discuss it right now, and then we'll move on to the castle and explain you guys the stuff in there. Um, basically, the way you have to think about, by the way, like about these Imperial Council points, is technically, yes, this is good. Why wouldn't you take it? Well, you wouldn't take it because you have five options only. You cannot take all nine. You have to take five. Uh, and the landmark that, that improves it up to seven. So. Usually, 
the ones that are taken is this one, this one, this one, this one, and then this one. So, it's like, would you rather have a military school or trading that might not even get to that point, right? Uh, would you rather have 15% movement speed or trading that might not happen? So that's how you should think about it. If it was free and you get all of them, hell yeah, get it. But you have to prioritize. Now the last tier is fast training. So if I take one of these now, uh, then I can, the next vizier point, I can spend his own to the last one. Fast training increases production of military schools by 25%. And yes, this does stack with blacksmiths. So blacksmiths do increase production speed in military schools. And this will further increase the military school uh, production. So obviously this is really good. If you have three or more uh, military schools, you just gain more units for free. Uh, the next one is very situational, very, very situational. And I would completely advise against taking this unless you're about to die to some kind of all in and you just need a little bit of extra oomph to survive. So what this does is it spawns two Janissaries for each of your military schools at the landmark. Now, this is the cool thing. So remember how I told you that you cannot produce knights or Janissaries for military schools uh, in feudal? Well, you can spawn Janissaries with this Vizier point in feudal. So... Um, if the feudal game is so long that you got to this point where you can take this and you're playing against French, you can take this and if you have three military schools, you will spawn, you, for the guides. you will spawn six Janissaries, which are castle unit. So that's something to consider. But the reason why I'm saying this is this land last one, which is probably the best one, Advanced Academy. Outfits military schools with the ability to produce knights and janissaries for free. But even though you can take it in feudal, you cannot produce knights or janissaries in feudal. If you take this, you have to wait until you get to castle in order to produce janissaries or knights for free out of military schools. So that's something to remember and that's something to take a note of. So like I said... You only have five points, so usually what players take right now at a high level is Mechter Drums, 15% movement speed, uh, Anatolian Hills, it gives you 2,000 food under your TC, and Villager Mining Speed, 10%, Military Campus for plus one military schools, Fast Training for 25% uh, production of military schools, Increase, Advanced Academy. These are, I feel like, a must-haves, like the, uh, or, or sorry, these two are not a must-haves. I would probably say that um, depending what part in the game you want to play, you have to take. I would say a must-haves are probably Mech their Drums, Military Campus, Fast Training, Advanced Academy. And then you have an option of taking Anatolian Hills or Siege Cruise, depending if you're like trying to play Imperial or if you need food in the Feudal, sometimes you might take this. But you always have to consider that you might run out of Vizier points to take everything you want. So you kind of need to plan uh, in advance. Because once you take these, you cannot change them. Now, with that being said, you can take 5 out of 9. But if you advance to Castle with this landmark, Istanbul Imperial Palace, it doubles the Imperial Council experience around the landmark. So if I were to put it here, these three stables right here, will give me double experience from creating units which is not that big getting the zero points is pretty easy i would say like it's not this thing where you need to be imperial to get them you're gonna get them pretty quickly but it gives you double experience from production and increases the zero point limit by plus two so if you're going for this landmark i would suggest taking this one this one this this that's four five six and then you can either go Janissaries to get some extra units, or you can go for uh, trade bags. That's up to you. Um, the other landmark is Mehmed Imperial Academy, which I'm going to make right here. Because I want to show you guys that one. This one is pretty straightforward. It just increases XP and Vizier Point Limit by plus two. So let's go and make this one. 
What this is, is um, fairly simple. It produces siege engines for free, but with a longer train time. So this is basically a military school for your siege units, um, which you're gonna see in a second. And I'm actually gonna get this um, Vizier point just so I can show it to you guys. The one where it allows me to uh, garrison my siege with infantry. We're gonna move units over there. <clears throat> And we're gonna age up soon. Also, um, it's very important. You can see that my uh, age through landmark is in the range of the uh, blacksmith uh, because blacksmith also increases the production speed of this landmark, which is pretty neat. So, the moment you age up, it will start producing a mangonel, and it's gonna take two minutes and 15 seconds for a mangonel to pop out. You can change it to springles, trebuchets, um, then in Imperial you can change it to Ribaldequin, check W, or the Great Bombard, aka the guy she tells me not to worry about. Now, what did we get by advancing to Castle? Well, we got men-at-arms, we got the normal upgrades, we got access to Janissaries, so we're gonna make a couple of those in archery ranges, they cost 60 food, 100 gold. And then we have the knights, which I'm going to make a couple of as well. And now if you look, this influence is now 33% because we have advanced into Castle Age. And if we look at the Imperial Schools, now we can produce men-at-arms or crossbows out of them. And once we take this zero point, we will also be able to produce knights, which I'll show you guys in a second. So, here are the janitors, right here, and what they do is they do 16 damage, so they're pretty decent against like infantry, like men at arm or spearmen, like they do okay damage, but they have 16 bonus damage against cavalry and they shoot really fast, so they're really really good against cavalry, that's what they're supposed to counter, but if you look here, Janissaries receive a plus 50% of ranged damage. Now, there's something to explain because there's been a change recently that they've made. So Janissaries are not a ranged unit. They don't count as a ranged unit. So horsemen or any unit that deals bonus damage to uh, ranged units will not do bonus damage to them. Um... So, for example, Horseman has bonus damage against Archers, right? Um, oh, it doesn't say. Oh, no, here we go. Yeah, Horseman has 9 damage plus 9 versus ranged. Now, even though Janissary are... This is a bit confusing. They are a ranged unit, but they don't have that tag. So, Horseman will not do that bonus 9 damage against them. But, Janissaries will receive 50% ranged damage. So... The counters to Janissaries are crossbows, archers, and obviously mangonels because they do splash damage, right? Um, but any kind of ranged unit absolutely demolishes Janissaries. There you go. I know this this might be a little confusing. So yeah, they're not their type is not ranged unit, so horsemen don't do bonus damage against them. So that makes them even better against horsemen. But they do take bonus range damage. But if there's a unit that says does 10 more damage against ranged units, the Janissaries will not take the dam bonus damage against that. Only if that unit is ranged. Does that make sense? Yeah, like English villagers will do bonus damage against Janissaries. 50% bonus damage. Alright. So, um, another thing about Janissaries, you have this thing right here. They can actually repair siege engines. So, if you do a push and your siege is uh, damaged, you can actually repair it with Janissaries. So, very nice. Um, so this talent I took earlier, Siege Cruise, you can see now, I'm gonna put the Archer inside and now it's one out of one. So when this Mangonel sets up and attacks, you can see it attacks pretty fast, right? And that's that bonus 25%. I'm gonna take this Vizier Point, Advanced Academy. And if you look, now I can produce uh, knights or Janissaries, so I'm going to produce one of each from the Imperial Schools, which is really, really, really good because you can basically produce knights or Janissaries <clears throat> forever because they're gold units. So, very nice. 
Um, what else? What else? Um, they have the coolest looking knights in the game. Can we get some uh, poggers in the chat for the knights, please? If possible. They are. They look cool as fuck, and uh, that's it. They just, they just win on the on the coolness part. So I activated chat again, but it's not showing. So you guys are, uh, Sanch. Doesn't show on screen for whatever reason. Uh, it might work soon. Now, what else is there left to say for the um, for the castle age? Uh, I'll build a mosque. We'll build siege workshop, and we'll build a keep. Uh, by the way, I said this before, but I'll say it again. This landmark does count as mill, so you can upgrade your stuff in here. Just so you guys know. So if you have this landmark, you don't need a mill. You can just upgrade stuff here. Oh, there we go. The chat's working again. Great. So imams. There we go. Like I said, they will not do AoE healing unless you take field work uh, in the Imperial Council. So their Siege Workshop is, like I said, uh, it's pretty normal, except you can make Ribaldequins and Great Bombers in Imperial. And if I put Blacksmith right here, I'm going to show you guys. So if uh, Mangonel is taking 30 seconds to make, once Blacksmith is done... Whoa. Wait, what? Is this not supposed to? <clears throat> is this bugged or is it not supposed to work on Seed Workshop? Because you can clearly see it's getting the influence bonus. It's supposed to? Yeah, I don't know. Okay, well, today I learned. I guess I was building my siege workshops around Blacksmiths for nothing. Um, but yeah, I'm not sure. I'll actually report this to devs, or ask them at least. Because if it was not intended to work, you can see if I build it near Mosque, it doesn't show the plus sign because it doesn't work for Mosque. But you can see there's a plus sign when you build it around workshops. So you think it works, it just doesn't show? Okay, I'll make a mango now at exactly 37. So it should come out at like 20, 20, 22 ish. I don't think it works. I don't think it works. 30 seconds is buffed. Mm, no. Wait, is it? Maybe I'm stupid. Wait, does it insta reduce the build time the moment you put it down? Oh, it's 40 seconds, you're right. Wait, so if I put it like this... Wait, am I crazy? Or it said 30 seconds before this thing was done. Okay, maybe I'm crazy. Okay, it works! It works! No, but now when I built the blacksmith, it didn't work. 40 seconds. Look, I'm building it. 40 seconds. I swear! Okay, maybe I'm crazy, but I swear earlier, when I started building the blacksmith and I moused over, it was 30 seconds already. I'm like 90% sure. Okay, anyway, well, you can see it reduces the, um, it reduces the thing. Alright, let's move on to the next thing. So, um, keep, just a normal keep, nothing special. And, oh yeah, let's show you the boats. So, you can make a grand galley. Now, one thing that I'm not actually sure, because I haven't practiced Ottoman on water too much. One thing that I'm not sure, so these guys count as military schools, and this is something I mentioned earlier, and they can produce units while they're just floating around the water. But I don't know if they are producing units while you have... If, if there's a cap, if you have military schools, or you can just make 20 of these and they constantly produce units. I'm actually not sure. Also, by the way, uh, Blacksmith works with docks, just so you guys know. So obviously sometimes it's hard to place a, a, a Blacksmith in the range of docks, but that, as you can see, it works with docks as well. Um, 
Yeah, okay, it doesn't work. So military school limit reached. So, I mean, I don't really know in what kind of situation you would delete your military schools unless you're like on a full island map. Uh, but you can see they have 25 slots. And these are uh, ships that have bombard damage. They got quite a lot of health and uh, they can take down docks. So there you go. These are the transport ships. And as you can see, they have slightly faster movement speed poggers kind of useless but there it is now next thing let's age up the imperial <clears throat> and show you guys what's there as well uh yeah if you take black if you make blacksmith next to docks it's 25 percent um increased production for docks as well now the last two landmarks the imperial landmarks Istanbul Observatory. So what this landmark does is pretty straightforward. Um, it, it acts as a university and improves the influence provided by the university and blacksmiths to 60%. So if you build it here, it will obviously have this influence uh, zone where you can make production buildings, but also these blacksmiths right here will be producing up to 60% or 60% faster instead of, uh, what is the cap, 45%? Uh, 40%. Yeah, and then the other landmark is Sea Gate Castle. Uh, it acts as a keep, and all keeps gain an aura that increases trader and trade ship movement speed by forty percent and armor by ten. So, as you can see, uh, this line, you, these like small uh, lines that you see, is the range for the shooting, I think, and this massive circle around it is the aura range. So if I was trading like from here to the top right corner, if you put this keep like around this area, uh, you will get the aura. So every time the traders move through, they will get 40% movement speed. And then if you plop another keep like there and another keep like normal keep like there, your traders will have 40% movement speed extra and they will get plus 10 armor, which is quite good. Overall, I feel like both of these landmarks are kind of me. You know, not great, but majority of the time, unless you're dying or you want to secure a position in one-on-ones, sometimes you make a keep like here to secure gold and stone. You're not really going to be using this in one-on-one -on -one for trading necessarily. You're going to be using it as, as a point of defense on the map. Obviously, <clears throat> this is great in team games if you're trading. But most of the time, people go for Istanbul Observatory because not only it uh, increases the production speed of all blacksmiths, but it's an instant university. So universities cost 450 wood, so you get that for free. Now, one thing I forgot to mention, shame on you guys for not bringing this up. Uh, this was a change in one of the recent patches for Ottomans, or the latest patch, is all Ottoman production buildings actually cost 60 wood. So, if you look, barracks cost 100 wood, dock costs 100 wood, archery range costs 100, uh, stables cost 100, blacksmiths also cost 100, um, TC is normal, siege workshops are also cheaper, and mosque is same cost. And then university is also 300 wood because that also has the cost reduced. So I forgot to mention that, and this works from you know, Dark Age. So in Dark Age, Feudal Age, your barracks, docks, archer ranges, stables cost only 100 wood. So, very nice. Um, once we finish this landmark, you can see now earlier Mangono was producing at 30 seconds with um, with Blacksmith, 40 seconds without. Now Mangono's uh, take 25 seconds to produce. So, very nice. And this does not affect upgrades, by the way. Just saying. Um, from this landmark, right now we can switch to Great Bombards. It's going to take quite a while. It takes 3 minutes and 45 seconds. But Great Bombard costs 1,500 resources. It's 600 wood, 900 gold. So I'm going to make a couple of those just so you guys can see. And I'm also going to disable my military schools because I am uh, about to be supply locked. So once you build the university, you can just research your stuff here, and then you can build production around it. Um, what else did we get in Imperial? Uh, I mean, you get Imperial upgrades, you know, like uh, Elite Vet, or sorry, yeah, Elite upgrades, so nothing special there. 
Uh, you can get elite knights as well. Uh, barracks, nothing new. Stables, nothing new. In archer ranges, you get elite janissaries, and you also get this upgrade, which is obviously unique to Ottomans because it's a janissary upgrade. Increases janissary gun damage by three, so it's just a flat out damage buff. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that's new. There's the Great Bombard. Um, we do have Karak, and we have the Imperial Fleet. This is the unique upgrade for Ottomans, unlock an Imperial Age. Increase the production speed of gunpowder ships, which are these two. Um, and their movement speed by 15%. Amazing. So here we go. These knights are now not upgraded yet. They're about to be. So once these knights get upgraded, they're going to look even cooler. Maybe not cooler, but they're still cool. Now, Red Bombard, again, you can put a unit inside, and we're gonna take this uh, uh, boar right here. Very nice. And yeah, if we take Mechter, you can see this siege. Uh, this siege has 15% attack speed. As I promised. See that? Mangalons have 15% attack speed. Do you guys know why this one is shooting faster compared to the other ones? It's because it has a unit inside, so the recharge time is increased 25%. See how much faster it shoots? It's pretty good. Pretty good. Anyway. Uh, what else did I want to say? I mean, I think that's pretty much it. I don't think there's much left to, to say. That's pretty much Ottoman in a nutshell. Um, the way you want to play Ottomans in general. Uh, trying to see. Yeah, I don't think there's anything else. I mean, there's a wonder we can make for shits and giggles. Uh, and obviously, we can make uh, Imperial Landmark. Or, sorry, Military School. And now we have five Military Schools total. Um, so, how do you play Ottomans? In general, you can do a feudal uh, all-in build, super aggressive build, which I will be making the guide about. Or you can go second TC, get the extra sheep and mining speed of a zero point thing, and then go castle. And then you can produce knights for free out of military schools and just go knights or janissaries or whatever else. What the fuck is it? I have never seen this before. This is from the Wonder. But why is it there? <laughs> I wonder if it's gonna despawn when the Wonder comes up. I mean, obviously, there's nothing there. You can select it. There's their wonder. Azure Mosque. Boom. And uh, yeah, like I said, there's a few different ways to play Ottomans. Great bombards, by the way, are really, really, really fun to use. Uh, they do a fuck ton of splash damage. I kind of wish that there was an opponent to show you right now. They do a lot of splash damage, so you can actually use them like mangonels. But uh, Cauldrons are very, very good against them. They counter them pretty well because they have longer range and culverins don't need to set up um so you would need spring to protect great bombards but obviously they do crap ton of damage and they're really really good but also uh really really expensive so um why can't ottomans get incendiary oh it doesn't work okay well that's that then that's a bug i wasn't even aware of that but anyway um I mean, the sieves are new. I'm sure it's going to get fixed copium. 
Um, or maybe it's just a visual bug, I actually don't know. Uh, because, like I said, you usually want to play them in Feudal or Castle. Anyway, if you're watching this on YouTube, I want to thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate you. The next video will most likely be everything you need to know about Malians and kind of give you tips and tricks with Malians, explain their uh, unique units. And then we'll be doing uh, build order guides for both Ottomans and Malians and then all the other sims for season three because quite a lot has changed. Uh, the game is more, you know, uh, uh, aggressive and more action early on. Slap your keyboard, slam your monitor. If you're not subscribed on YouTube, make sure you do. If you're if you're watching on Twitch and you're not subscribed on on, on YouTube, that's a perma ban. Um, have a great day, YouTube gamers. For Twitch gamers, let's keep going.